Blessed day, everyone. Greetings to you in the name of the Father, the Creator, Allah, Yah, Yod, Heh, Vahu, Heh, Elohim, God in our modern day term, and to the Son, our Lord, Thoth, Melchizedek, Jehovah. This is Neophyte DAG bringing you another message in Breaking the Spell series. And in this message, we're going to talk about King Charles II, King Charles I, Queen Henrietta, Queen Catherine of Braganza of Scotland, England, Ireland, France, Wales, Denmark, Norway, and Portugal were all black people, people of color. And in this series, we always base it on Job 9 verse 24, which tells us and warns us that the earth will be given into the hands of the wicked, who will change the identity the image, the storyline, the history of the people of color to another image, a Caucasian image, which were not doing these things, but taking the credit as the people doing these things and images will be replaced to look as the Caucasian people who were not doing these things, but claim to be doing these things. So this is what this series is about. And we're going to focus on King Charles II. I've done other messages with King Charles I, which I have identified him as being a person of color, a black person. Now I'm going to talk about the son. Obviously, the son has to be black, a person of color, because his mother was black, his father was black. King Charles II of England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and of France, 1649 to 1685. He's also part of the Stuart line of family from Scotland, originally from Scotland, that were governing the throne of England. His father was Charles I. King Charles II, he was born in England. His parents are originally from Scotland, but he was born in England. He died in England as well. He founded and established the states of North Carolina, South Carolina, New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania in the United States. Those were the colony at that time that he formed, which later on became part of the United States. He founded in the Caribbean St. Lucia and Tortola. He named North Carolina and South Carolina in honor of his father. Latin Carolus means Charles. That's to where Carolina came from. His father, King Charles I, I've identified in a previous message that he was black. His father, King Charles I, was dethroned and beheaded by Oliver Cromwell in 1649. I've done another message showing clearly that Oliver Cromwell was black, a person of color as well. His mother, Queen Henrietta Marie, she was from France. She was a person of color as well. She was black. His wife, Catherine Braganza, from Portugal, she was also a person of color. She was black. So let's jump into this. We're going to talk about his father, King Charles. We're going to go over this very quickly because I've done other messages to prove that. We're going to look in this book, Charles I by Isaac Disraeli, page 417. Charles I of middle stature, his complexion brown. Second proof we did in the previous message came from King Charles I, a study by Walter Phelps Dodge, page 28, Charles, his dark coloring. Third proof I presented in the previous message, King Charles by Pansy Packenham, page 142 of that book. Harrington, a person who is describing Charles, put him in a poem format. As I was going by Charing Cross, I saw a black rider on a black horse. They told me it was King Charles I. So these three witnesses, three proof, these three receipts that I provided in a previous message for Charles I, clearly proved that he was a person of color. He was black. Same for Charles II, mother, Henrietta Maria France, Royal Martyr by Charles Wheeler Coit, page 43 of that book, 
Princess Henrietta Marie. The princess, born in 1609, was then in her 14th year, dark of complexion. She's dark complexion, a black person in our modern day term. Another proof, in this book, Trial of King Charles I by J.G. Muddyman, page eight of that book, Howell, who had seen the queen, Queen Henrietta Marie, lasting complexion, dark brown. Henrietta, dark brown complexion, person of color, she's a black woman. Now we jump into Charles I. His mother is black, father is black, mother and father are people of color. It goes without saying that the son has to be a person of color, a black person, but I'm going to give you proofs that are out there in writings because your history, our history of people of color are buried in various vaults, libraries, and archives, and you have to dig deeper beyond Wikipedia, beyond the images that Google is giving you because the images are going to be lie and the narratives are going to be lie. You have to go deeper into your studying. First book, we'll look at Charles II, King of England, Scotland, and Ireland by Ronald Hutton. Page two of that book, it says, Charles, nobody, however, called him handsome. He wasn't a handsome person. His mother described him as downright ugly and marred. In addition, by a swarthy complexion, his great height, robust constitution, and dark, full-fleshed face. So in telling you what swarthy means, it's a dark skin complexion. It's dark. His face is dark. His skin is dark. So his mother, even though she was dark, he came out exceptionally dark, and she just wasn't happy with that. Another book we'll look at, Charles II and His Court by A.C.A. Brett. Page 23 of that book, in appearance, Montville described Charles, his swarthy complexion. We understand from the first support that swarthy means dark. The proof in the Webster Dictionary also means dark complexion. He was of a dark complexion. Also in page 148 of this book, his sacred majesty, his complexion is somewhat dark. So again, swarthy, dark. Swarthy is a word that if you don't dig further and go into your dictionary, you won't know what it means, that it's dark. That's why I'm tying you back to these two things. So when you see complexions, with words that you don't understand, you go look it up so you can find out truth. Another book, The Complete Works in Verse and Prose of Andrew Marvel by Alexander Grossart. Page 350 of this book, it's a poem talking about King Charles II. The portrait is as follow. This person was very tall, black man. So it jumped right to the point. He's a tall black man, Charles II. Another book, History of King Charles II of England by Jacob Abbott, page 105 of that book. Anne Marie was a princess that they were trying to arrange to marry Charles II when he was young. And she wrote a description of that meeting in her own journal which they posted after her death. And in that journal, she describes him. He was young at that time. He was only 16 or 17 years of age. Rather tall, fine head, black hair, a dark complexion. She wrote that in her book. Page 165 of that book, it talks about now Charles II again. They were trying to hide him at the time when Oliver Cromwell beheaded his father. The entire royal family at that time was in jeopardy of losing their heads as well. So they were trying to hide Charles II. Therefore, they had to disguise him 
and tone down his complexion because he was so dark he would be easily spotted. So Mr. Wolf made a suggestion and put together a concoction of walnut leaves which he had prepared to alter the complexion of Charles II. His complexion, which was naturally very dark and peculiar, he was very black. He was a very black man, a very colored person. Another book, King Charles II by Arthur Bryant. I'm giving you as much proof to show you that the information is out there. We just have to dedicate ourselves to gaining understanding. Whatever the subject matter is that you want to know, it's there, but you have to go do your own research to find truth. Page 18 of that book, there was a proclamation, an order given against Charles II. And in reading the proclamation that wanted ad, it says, Charles Stewart, long, dark man, above two yards high, offering a reward of a thousand pounds. That's how much they were offering for his capture. To anyone who should betray him, they wanted someone to betray him and turn him in. But the ad said, the wanted ad said, long, dark man, Charles Stewart. It's a black man. Then in page 81, after Cromwell's death, Charles II was allowed to come back to England and to reclaim the throne. So this was now his moment when he came back to England and he was riding on a horse, looking valiant as ever, reclaiming his seat as king of England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. The king rode into view. Here he was at last, the black boy. His nickname was the black boy because he was so dark. Whom so many had secretly toasted and mentioned in bated breath and dreamt of. Tall, slim, and dark. He rode bareheaded between the dazzling crowd, bowing now to the left and to the right. This was his proud moment, the black boy's proud moment. There's a pub in England at this point in time that is called Black Boy, which is named after Charles II. Another book which talks about this nickname that he was given, King Charles II by Antonia Fraser. He got the sobriquet, it's a name, a nickname in French, Black Boy, Page 11 of that book, Charles, a striking physical appearance, which was even more foreign than his actual blood. First, he had an abnormal darkness of complexion, extremely black complexion, which gave him the sobriquet, the black boy, the nickname, the black boy. Make no mistake, all the lineage of King James, because King Charles II is the grandson of King James I. His father, King Charles I, was the son of King James I. They are all black people. So make no mistake when you see King James and his line, all the king line that came from King James all the way through the 1700 were all black people. There were black kings and queens of England under the lineage of King James. Any steward king that you see for England is a person of color, a black person. After the steward were the King George line of kingship, which are called the Hanover line. King George I, King George II, King George III, King George IV, all the way up to that line, they were all people of color. They were black. They were of German origin. They were black until they started to co-mingle with the Saxton line of family in Germany. Then they started to transition to being Caucasian. But the George, the King George line, were all dark-skinned people Charles II's wife, he was black, 
His wife is black. So again, every lineage after them are black, as I've said before. In that same book, King Charles II by Antonia Fraser, volume one, page 270 of that book. Catherine, she's Portuguese. She's from Portugal. So contrary to what you believe, the Portuguese were not Caucasian. They were dark-skinned people, and gradually they were faded out and replaced by the Caucasian people. Catherine must have appeared to the English small and dark and very foreign, swarthy, wrote Evelyn. She was dark. She was swarthy, a black person. Catherine again being described in King Charles II by Arthur Bryant, page 137, page 138. At the bottom of 137, the people were anxious to see Catherine when it was announced she was going to marry Charles II. They made posts about the queen. As to her personage, as to how she looked, she was short and dark. She was dark, a black woman, a person of color. Conclusions which cannot be disputed by anyone. King Charles II of England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales was black. His father, King Charles I, was black. His mother, Henrietta Maria of France, was black. His wife, Queen Consort Catherine of Braganza of Portugal, was black. The person who beheaded his father, dethroned his father, Oliver Cromwell, was black. Conclusion, these were all people of color doing all these things. In England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, France, Portugal, they were all black people, people of color. I say black because it's a term that you know. It's not the right term to be using, but that's a term that you know and you're accustomed to. The proper word is people of color, melanated people if you want an alternative. But in order to make sure this message gets to all those who don't know the proper way to say it, I say black. They're all black. Cannot be disputed by anyone. They're all people of color, black people in our modern day term that were in Europe. Most all of them now are living in North America and the Caribbean. Picture of Oliver Cromwell. This was in the Library of Congress. If you look on the stamp on the book, you see Library of Congress, City of Washington. So the people in power know this information. You are the one who don't know and they're waiting for you to claim this knowledge so he can claim what is yours. No one is going to pull you out of this ignorance if you don't pull yourself out yourself. But it's known. This is Oliver Cromwell, a dark-skinned person. I covered him in another message. He was the one that was doing all the beheading. He was the one who started the deportation of many of the people of color to North America and the Caribbean. He started the mass deportation and the mass banishment of people of color, black people, to North America and to the Caribbean. The story that you get right now that they came out of Africa, no, they did not. They just went to North America and the Caribbean and blended in with the already dark-skinned natives that were there. And by 1924, the Racial Integrity Act of Virginia, their identity got wiped out. That act said, if you're of a dark skin complexion, you're automatically from Africa, and therefore you become black. You no longer had the privilege of saying you're a dark skinned person from Europe, and you were to be given the social status of white. White was a social status. If you're from Europe, regardless of color, you were white. So once that law got rid of that white social class for people of color from Europe, they became black. 
categorized by default as African, and they became blended in with the other dark-skinned people of color that were native to America and to the Caribbean. That's why it brings me to Jeremiah 16, verse 19, which is going to be the confession and the lamentation, the crying and the plea that those who made these changes to images and story are going to have to do when the judgment is being handed down to them. O oh Lord, which is Thoth, Melchizedek, Jehovah, my strength and my fortress, and my refuge in the day of the judgment, the Gentiles, the Gentile is the biblical name for the Caucasians. They're from the line of Japheth, the Caucasian race now in America, the white people in America, shall come unto you, O Lord, from all ends of America, earth means America, and shall say, surely our fathers have inherited lies, all lies that they have inherited. Vanity, useless things, self-praise things, conceited things of no value, wherein it has no profit. They gained nothing from it. It's just lie that was a temporary fix for them to give them boastfulness. But now everything will be shattered when the truth shall be revealed now and when the Lord shall show a great sign to reveal who the true people of Israel are, the true children of Israel, which are the dark-skinned, melanated people in America the people of Israel are, the true people of Israel, not the ones in the country Israel in North Africa, a.k.a. Middle East, but the true people of Israel, which are in the United States of America and the Caribbean. The main ones are in the United States of America and Canada. They're called the American Descendants of Slaves, ADOS. With that, I'll bring this message to a close. Stand strong, be strong, and stay strong in the name of the Father, our Creator, Allah, Yah, yod heh va heh Elohim, God in our modern-day term, and in the Lord, Thoth, Melchizedek, Jehovah, our Savior, our Redeemer, who is raising up Israel at this time, to take their rightful place. Mm -hmm.